Hey guys, welcome to Season 7, Episode 22 of Criminal Minds. Here we go. Thanks for letting me set this up. I, the whole team really didn't need to be here. I'm, I'm the one that held the favor. Everyone insisted. How you doing? Sorry, what? You okay? Oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm great. I'm pretty good. Um... What's going on? Graduate criminology class gets guest speakers of this caliber. But today, we're especially fortunate. There's no way you're I'd nervous. I'd like to welcome an old friend. What is going on? What's wrong with you? And on keyboards today, we have our technical analyst, Ms. Penelope Garcia. Hi. Now, in simple terms, at the BAU, we use behavioral science research. And today we're going to talk about how some serial killers get made. Because if you can understand that, then we can figure out a way to catch them. You see? My leash. I would love this class. <laughs> her mom left her dad because he liked to drink and beat her. And this is Tina Dyson, a 19-year-old college student from Seattle. With the most prolific serial killer the BAU has ever seen. Now, one thing you should understand is that no two killers are the same. Hey. Each occupy their own point oh, of snap. Uh, genetics, brain chemistry, psychology, Recognize a lot of those. factors. Oh. Object physical abuse. As well as horribly profound psychological abuse. No when he wasn't being ignored, he was being humiliated. Right now, we know there are at least 40 of them. But we believe that he may eventually claim over 100 victims. Now, we chose this case for today because we've been discovering bodies up and down the West Coast since 1992. This unsub's entire childhood was a crucible, and in it, a psychotic killer was forged. What the hell? This guy would get the death penalty front, like, the moment he walked through the door and got the conviction. Like, holy shit. The first victim that was found was Rachel Moore. She was the runaway. Her body had been thrown into a dumpster in an alley. The medical examiner said that she was very malnourished and really dehydrated. Several defensive wounds on her hands and forearms. She put up a hell of a fight. Had a girl. 53 stab wounds. Oh! Abdomen and genitals. Damage made it impossible to determine if there was any sexual assault. That might be a forensic cover measure. He what the hell? Court. He looks so young. Stay as long as you need. They Love did a really good job. Out. But there's a lot about Rachel that tells us about the answer. She was young, so most likely he was too. What makes you think that? What? Ryan! Whoa, 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 whoa. Look, he's not going to give me a rain check. I have to see him today. So right. yes, uh, maybe learn her with a ruse. Or... Tina Dyson was home for the summer when she disappeared. Her body was found in a shallow grave just outside of Seattle. But it was actually her abduction site that gave us the answers we needed. Yeah. I'm going to go get Janice, okay? We're going home. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> You don't leave the drunkest by themselves. Jeez, what are you, a ninja? Where'd you come from? So, his anger is obviously directed at women. Uh, yes, but the real question is why, and, and the why is what always leads us to the who. I've got to see him today, Aaron, you know that. The possibilities are endless. And who? the sub was figuring it all out for himself, too. We know that because he was a ball bear. He started with a runaway, a victim with a high-risk lifestyle. He probably knew that her abduction would go unreported. The case went completely cold. They didn't hear from him again until 1997. Five years? Two bodies were found in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. 
Excuse me, I'm looking for the case agent. That would be me, Agent Rossi. <laughs> agent Hotchner, Seattle Division. We spoke on the phone. Uh, I inherited the case from Agent Bidwell. A 27-year-old mother of two. Both women had had their reproductive organs completely removed. Not just mangled. He's evolving. Sounds like he's moving more toward ritual. And apparently he's not locked into an age preference. The victims seem to be aging along with him. Drug addict that needs a fix. We were so it was just in a different location? We just hadn't found the bodies yet. Damn. Now we knew that back in 92 when the media went wide with the story, our unsub got scooped. <laughs> Something for you. Wound Raider is a name that you gave him. I won't glorify him. I call him a murderer. And exactly how is he killing him? My only concern is capturing him and bringing closure to the families of the victims. No further questions. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, Agent Rossi retired, but the BAU grew. We trained more profilers, hired tech analysts. Press liaison. Retired and came back. Resident James. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Major Rossi, why'd you retire? Needed a change. I was working on my third divorce. Third? Yes, Zimmerman, my third. <laughs> in 2005, we got another hit on the unsub, this time in Los Angeles. We knew it was him because of his signature. Sorry, what's his signature? Uh, it's a rare combination of MO and ritual that allows us to link cases over time and geographic distances. Look at your marks on her wrist and ankle. She's restrained. And he gave her a complete history. Look me. at them. The uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, all removed. A Ew. little crude, but he cut all the right ligaments. He knew what he was doing. Oh. I let her throat. Everything in her stomach. Dry as a bone. She hadn't eaten for days. So he starved her, too. That's a pretty specific MO. This probably isn't his first victim. I wonder if we should be looking at doctors and medical students. It's definitely not his first victim. I don't think he's a doctor or a medical student. Call Gideon? No. The first call Gideon. was to Agent Rossi. We were looking for a white male in his early to mid 30s. We think he was antisocial and had low self esteem, so he probably kept to himself. And when he was on the move and not settled, he probably looked out of that vehicle. We knew he always started with a victim who lived a high risk lifestyle, like a prostitute or a runaway. And then he moved on to a victim with a low risk lifestyle. The strained mother-child relationship is a hallmark for many killers. That doesn't make any sense. I hate myself or I hate my mother, so I kill women by ripping out their wounds? <laughs> it only needs to make sense to him. Yep. One man's logic is another man's crazy. <laughs> we stayed in LA for six weeks and worked the case. And then it went cold. Damn. But I rented a house in the Hollywood Hills and decided to finish my book out there. I figured if I was close, I could lend a hand if something happened. So, what drove him on there? It would be four years before we got another break. Not too long after I came out of retirement. Hmm. Hey! I wonder what brought him home. It's a long trip. We should get going. But this time... We were ready for them. We wanted to use the press to our advantage, so we came up with what's called a targeted media strategy. Lord knows I love him, but here's to a night without him. To the kids. So husbands too. Okay, fine then. <laughs> <laughs> we're too old for this. Speak for yourself. Oh. <laughs> that drink was what, two hours and a big dinner ago? Are you sure? I'm fine, go. Okay. This is an interesting episode. They're, it's totally like different than usual. I, I like it. He's been moving south this whole time. Could have gone east or bounced back up north. I'm dying no. to know the end thing. Looks <laughs> like he's running from something. You guys have your own jet? Yes, Zimmerman. As a matter of fact, we do. Ooh. So, Penelope. One second. Okay, there you go. Ooh. Can you sweet, huh? Yeah. I recognized the place immediately. It was hard to forget. It's oh, that's the same place. Tina Dyson yeah. In 92. That's where he grabbed one of his first kills. First ones are always significant. And this is where my particular skill set comes in handy. See, I am like 
one of those uh, wonderful people in prison movies that can get you anything you need. And you needed to know everything there was to know about this particular part of the city. Zero, stingy with the dinero. A couple of fender benders, a bar fight. There was a homeless guy who was into mooning people, but no <laughs> life changers. So I extended my search another 10 years, and I found this. What's this girl got to do with a serial killer? Pump your brakes, sweet cakes, because I'm running it home. Turns out that Jane Doe, instead of given a name, she was given a patient number. So I tracked that number, and it turns out that she went back to that hospital several times after for prenatal care. And she eventually brought that baby to term. <laughs> she died. Oh, wow. It was at that point that I was able to find the corresponding death certificate and get her name, Georgina Yates. Her son, Thomas Yates, survived. He was put into the custody of his grandparents, Trudy and Roy Yates, Georgina's parents. We knew. Growing up, he got kicked out of two schools, both times for starting fires. Fire starting is the first part of what we used to call the homicidal triad. The other two parts are bedwetting and cruelty to animals. Then when he was 15, he committed his first murder. He was a skinny kid who snapped and stabbed the bullets. He was convicted, served three years in juvie, another seven in prison, and then he was released on parole. He talked about how his grandmother would starve him and make him sleep in the dog house. How she would beat him senseless we're never born. and sit on him until he couldn't breathe. Did you actually believe this guy? The prison psychiatrist concluded what? that Thomas was telling the truth. And I found out his grandfather had just died and his grandmother had lung cancer and she had just been admitted into a hospice care. And that is what brought Thomas home. Wow, okay. Tommy, the interval. What did he do this time? Do you know where he is? No idea. When was the last time you saw him? The day he put me in this damn place. My daughter's womb was cursed. That boy was a bastard born in sin. Nothing good ever comes out of sin. Huh. Baby, what can I do you for? Hey, Mom, I need you to run a number. 206-55-50112. Unit K? He needs something more isolated than an apartment. It was a storage container. The same storage container where his grandmother's stuff was being held. Oh. So how old would this guy be at this point? He was born in what? 67, this is... This 40s? You smell that? It's coffee. Shakes you under arrest. Agent Rossi. Nice to meet you after all these years. Wow. Is, I wonder if that's the guy he's going to meet. Or wants life, to see. So I'm not sure her psychological wounds will ever heal. David Parker Ray. How about John Edward Robinson? See, at any given time, we have at least 25 open cases. Every year, we're able to close around 15, yet new ones still seem to pop up. There are more serial killers out there than you may think. For hours. Staying absolutely silent or that kind of pressure was a skill he undoubtedly learned as a child. He, he was rendered silent for so long, it became a conditioned response. But we had him safely in custody, and we had other cases to solve. Eventually, Yates was tried, and he received the death penalty. And life I mean, went on. Of course. <laughs> then two years ago today... You have a call from an inmate in a correctional facility. Inmate, state your name. It's Tommy Yates. This call may be monitored and recorded. Press 2 if you accept the charges. That sounds like Prentiss. He called you personally? How'd he get your number? Probably from his attorney. What did he want? He wanted to make a deal, and I was the only one that he would make it with. What do you mean a deal? He's nearing his 50s. 
I've got something for you. It's a present. Open it. What is it? Open it and see. Is it like the location of bodies? You shouldn't have. Surprise. Those are some of the girls I took. Ones you didn't find. <laughs> There's 40 there. And I'll tell you where I put them. Here's what I want. One, no death penalty. Mm, no. I don't care if I'm rotten here, but no chair, and no injections. No. Two, I want to transfer it to the East Coast. I get to decide when you get the name. It'll be on a special day of my choosing. And you have to come and get it from me personally. That's what this episode's about. That's why he needs, to, he needs to see him today. Unbelievable. Deal. We checked the list he gave us, and then we went out to the locations where he said he dumped the bodies, and we found all 40. Did you actually make a deal with that maniac? We did. Not to bend to his will, but to bring the families of the victims some peace. I've been on the case so long, I felt obligated. I get that, but you should be able to shred that deal. Personally, this is Ruth Thomas. I'm afraid I have bad news about Jessica. Damn. That's messed up. Um, called me two days ago in Griffith Park. Anything. Anything at all. Please don't hesitate. the list. He keeps crossing them off. This job isn't just what I do. It's who I am. Is it worth it? Hmm. For every life we save? Yes. For every life you save. Damn right it is. Absolutely it's worth it. I can't imagine doing anything else. You have to go visit this guy every year to get the name of another victim. That's right. So what was the special day of his choosing? today. You really don't want us to go with you? No trouble at all. No, it's okay. I'll be fine. Mm. We'll see you tomorrow. You bet. Damn. Damn. Oh, is he gonna be okay? Of course he is. It's Rossi. That's messed up. The moment you get the last name, like, his chair should, like, turn into electricity. Agent Rossi, can't believe it's been a year already. Time flies. Come on, you should get out and do something. Never know how many of these things you got left. What's her name? Stay days when I was a kid. That's why I like celebrating yours. Her name? Took her in Eureka. Drove out to the Headwaters Forest Preserve up on Elk River Road. Hundred yards south of the trailhead. Went under a big old sequoia. Oh my god, I can imagine doing that. Birthday to you. It's on his Happy birthday? birthday to you. Happy birthday to Rossi. And many more. Oh, that's fucked. That is so, that, wow. That was really messed up. Not only does that terrible, horrendous human being get to continue living his life, 
he's basically messing with you every single year on your birthday. Like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you have not already. See y'all next time.